I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. It's all part of my processing flow for editing raw images using Capture One. Plus stick with me to the end of this video for a bonus editing tip. Okay, let's start off with a difficult topic, saving your images. So this is really not a new problem. This is just an old problem with a digital twist. I've been using this process now for over 12 years and it really has worked well for me over that time, regardless of which raw editing software I'm using. The idea is that I start with a year and then I, every time I have images to save, I create a new folder with the date and what the shoot was, i.e. X wedding or Y national park trip. And then I copy all of the raw files there. A consistent date format becomes really important when you import your images into a raw editing software. Speaking of importing images, after the images have downloaded, I go to the Capture One UI and under the file section and do import images, then go to the image, image folder that I want to import. Once I'm there, I click on the pick all. Basically, what this does is it selects everything to import. And I do this because I want to see bigger images so that I can select the files that I want. After you hit import, this can take a bit depending on your computer specs and how many images you're importing. After all the images have imported, you can see why I use a date and what I shot as the folder name uh, when saving the images. Under the library tab here, you can see that this is broken down by year and then by date. And then I have the name of the shoot. This allows me to very quickly be able to find a particular shoot anytime I want, or it makes it easy for me to search for a specific image. Next, I select the images I like most from the shoot. I look for composition, subject matter, sharpness. I do this with a rating function, giving the images that I like a one star rating. You can do this a few different ways, color tags, keywords, dates, all of that kind of stuff over here, or even a combination. You have to find what works for you, but for me, starting with just a star allows me to highlight the images that I'm most interested in editing. So after I go through all the images, what I'm left with is I can just go over to the single star, click on this, and I am filtered to just the images that I want to do at least some sort of editing on. Now I'm down to 15 images rather than the 393 of the total images that I took. Editing is where the fun really starts. This is where we get to be as creative as we want. I will stress that this is my workflow and for the people here that are doing things differently, like using functions or sessions or anything else for that matter, good for you. There is no right or wrong way to do things here in my opinion. I will stress though, to come up with a process flow that works for you and do it consistently so you produce consistent results. With that said, let's go to the style tab and under the base characteristics, the profile should automatically default to the camera you use or a generic RGB ICC profile. Next is the adjust tab. And this is where I spend the majority of my time in uh, Capture One. When you first come here, you'll notice this layers section. The image layer affects the whole image and then any additional layers that are in here only affect the areas that are masked off. It's important to always make sure you're on the layer that you want to be before making any adjustments below. I generally start with the white balance and adjust to what looks right. Uh, I will also use a color checker for jobs where I have to have perfect white balance Generally, I would expect that you would want this to probably be at about 5,100 5, to 5,000 Kelvin, depending on where you're shooting. I very rarely adjust the tent here. 
Next is the exposure section. And here I adjust the exposure based on the histogram above. I make sure that I'm not clipping anything and that I'm pushing everything where it should be. I also update the contrast here. And this is really just about uh, to taste. But again, if you overdo it, it'll look really kind of funky. So make sure to, you know, less is more. I rarely ever mess with the brightness. The saturation, I do sometimes, but be careful because it can, again, also be overwhelming. Moving on to the high dynamic range section, um, it can be really useful to push a shadow or bring back some highlights. So like in this image, we've got some shadows that might be a little bit harder than what I want them to be. So I can bring these back in a little bit. And then the highlights here, like we've got the sky and that kind of stuff. It was a pretty cloudy, foggy day. So, you know, I can adjust this as well a little bit here. White and blacks work very similar to the highlights. You can adjust these uh, to your liking and make sure that you're watching your histogram above to make sure that you're not clipping any of your information. Next is levels. Levels is really good because you can really dial in your blacks and your highlights. Make sure that you're really pushing this image as best you can. Then for the curves, I usually do just a small S curve on my image layer, which affects, again, the whole image. As you can see, that pushes a little bit of contrast um, as well. With the color editor, color balance, uh, black and white, I'll hit on that here in a little bit on a different tab. The clarity and the dehaze. I really use these sparingly. In this case, you know, you can see that it really kind of becomes really funky very fast if you use too much clarity. And then dehaze is really designed to push out some of that atmosphere, right? And in this case, I'll use quite a bit of it just because, it, again, it was a pretty hazy day. And, you know, it's, uh, it really does help bring out some of the sky. Lastly on this page is vignetting. This is something that you used to get a lot of with, you know, vintage camera lenses and so on. And it's very stylistic. I will um, again say that this is really just to taste and sometimes I don't even do this depending on, you know, I don't use vignetting depending on uh, the image. Now let's, let's go back up here and hit on the uh, layers again. So this is where things get really fun, right? So I want to do this adjustment layer and I want to put a mask in here because what I really want to do is I want to affect the sky. I don't want to affect this foreground and the foliage too much and that kind of stuff, right? And so I can do this, I can pump up the contrast or I can reduce the contrast, or I can actually bring down the exposure here and bring in more of the sky without really affecting this foreground too much. I can also go in here and push some of the saturation. I can go in and really bring out some of the blue. Again, I'm not affecting any of this piece of the image here. Now, on the right hand side with this image, I have this tree over here. And unfortunately, by doing this, I'm sitting here and really kind of, you know, making this thing get really dark and kind of go away. And so what I can do here is I can go in here and then bring back some of that exposure. But you got to really be careful because when you start going too much, you tend to start getting halos and it's easy for it's easy for people to see what's going on. The next one that I will hit on here is where you can erase things or clean things up. So here I've got a couple of lint spots uh, on this image. And so very quickly I can just get rid of these and they're completely cleaned up. You can do bigger stuff if something bothers you, like say you wanna get rid of this piece here because it's bugging you with the water. That gives you a really, really good idea of layers and kind of how they work. Defining, 
This is where you can sharpen the image. Again, if you go too far, it really starts looking crazy. This was shot in the middle of the day, so there's not really a lot of noise here, but you can adjust the noise. You can add film grain. You can you know, adjust uh, for Muir here. And, and so this is on the refine section is really, really about cleaning up the image and getting it looking very, very nice. So let's hit on the colors. And this is one of the reasons why I really, really like uh, Capture One. So I can go in here and say I just want to pop these greens. So I can go on this color checker here and add another layer. And I'm going to go here and I'm just going to hit this, hit this green right here. And I'm going to go to advanced so that we can see it better. And so basically what this does is it says this green is in this area. And now I can adjust the hue. I can adjust the saturation and lightness. And let me show you what that looks like if you're on the base layer. You go here and I'm changing the hue. And as you can see, it just slightly changes it. But it is a great way to really isolate a color and be able to you know, highlight a certain area or highlight a certain color in a way that allows you to not really affect the rest of the image. This is where I really feel like this is a super powerful raw editing processor. And, you know, then you also have your color balance here. I like the fact that you've got shadows, midtones, and highlights. You can adjust these, you know, over here. And if you want to go super basic, back to old school, you can do black and white. Now that I have my images edited, I can export them for use or just to store. This is something that you don't have to do, but I prefer to have a high resolution TIFF file of the few images that I edited that I like the most. This comes in handy if I ever change raw editors or if I need a large file to print from. Or maybe I want to do more editing in say Affinity, Photoshop, or any other photo editing software. Okay, to do this, I create a subfolder and I call it underscore one underscore edited images. Now, when I hit return, what happens is this goes to the top. Putting that one up there is an easy cheat way to get your folders to come up to the top so that they are easy to find. Then when I go over to capture one, I go export. I set up all of the image parameters that I want. And part of that is choosing the correct folder, but edited images. Once I choose this folder, it makes it easy to find all of the edited images that I've done for each shoot in the future. Okay, I promised a bonus tip at the beginning of the video, and here it is. When you're editing similar images from a photo shoot, the quick and time-saving way to edit those images is to just go and edit one of the images, copy the adjustments, highlight any of the similar images, and then you can apply those adjustments. This is a quick and easy way to save a whole bunch of time and then all you have to do is go in and adjust the, those images just a little bit. This gives you a quick jumping off point to make minor tweaks, saving you a ton of time when you're editing your images. I really hope you enjoyed this video of my raw editing process using Capture One, and it gave you some ideas that you can incorporate into your image editing workflow. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future content, and until next time, enjoy your photography journey.